Right, hello and welcome to this week's angling vlog. This week you join me on the banks of the River Dane and we're in search of chub and dace. Before we get into this week's vlog, I just want to thank everybody who takes the time to leave a comment on the channel, you know, is subscribed to the channel and leaves a like on the videos. The support you show the channel is really appreciated and thank you very much to all those that take the time to comment on the videos and I'm so glad that you guys enjoy them. So today is a much different day to a couple of weeks ago when we visited the venue. It was minus three that day and it was the first day of a frost. Conditions were terrible really, there was colour in the water, it had extra pace and everything was against us. We did manage to winkle out one chub that day and that in itself was a result. That session a couple of weeks ago, conditions couldn't be worse and today really conditions couldn't be better. It's overcast. The water has got that clarity to it. The extra pace that we had last time has dropped out. And conditions wise, there is no reason why we shouldn't get one or two bites today. I'm hoping just to get one or two chub on the bank and get a bend in the rod. I've already set up behind me and been introducing some maggots into the swim periodically. I've plumbed up and it's just time to make that first cast and see if we can pick up one of those River Dane chub. If you do enjoy the video, please take a second to leave the video a like. If you're new around here, subscribe to the channel. There's a new video on the channel every Friday at 6pm. So let's get that rod in hand and make a start. The setup for the session is my 12 to 14 foot Corum glide rod. I've got four pound, four ounce float fish on a Shimano Tecum reel. That's down to a six number four stick float. I've got a bulk shot of number four Dinsmore weight. And that's down to two pound, one ounce bay of pearl on, and a tiny size 18 hook. So the first cast of the day, I'm just starting off down the middle, with it being clear, I'm hoping that's where the fish are going to be. The fish are obviously in this area, but I'm hoping that today's session will show just how that initial first frost, and a harsh one, can affect the fishing you know it was minus three that day from being five or six degrees the day before but you just gotta hope now stay quiet and just hope that there's one or two about i'm not going too far over i'm just going probably three quarters of the way over i've only got that six number four stick float on we are going to go right over the other side we are going to have to add a bit more weight but normally on here it can take a while to get a bite but you can see there the first almost definitely a chub and that just shows it took us what two two hours two and a bit hours to get a bite when it was minus three and that's the second shot down and went into a fish and that just shows the difference that it makes one day you're battling and trotting away for hours and the next day when the conditions are a bit better the clarity's better the pace is better it's taking two casts with me talking to get a bite so one thing you'll notice i always say when i'm chub fishing is not to be in too much of a rush if you take your time, you can catch quite a few chub during the day. The fish is in the net rested, it's been unhooked. So what I'm gonna do is, before I do anything else, I'm just gonna put, you know, a few maggots going down the swim. And we'll just put some hemp where we had the bite. And what that means is if there's any chub in the area, by the time we've blocked the chub, there's just a bit of bait going through just to keep them in the area and get them back on that line of bait. So there we go, the first chub of the session. I don't think we're going to get to hold him up too long because he's been fighting in the net more than he did in the water. It's a nice start to the vlog. And as I said, just shows the other week, two and a half hours, two hours to get one bite. This week, two casts. And it just shows how them first frosts really do kill it even on a river for chub let's get him in the keep net and let's make another cast so 
just putting a bit more bait in in line with that tree down there is where I got the bite and that's where you would imagine the maggots are going to be hitting the bottom so I'm just going to spend probably a minute or two as if it was just trotting the swim but with no float going down and just drip feed some maggots in it's always important to keep that bait going in that's what's going to draw fish upstream or downstream from upstream above you know that food going in is what's going to draw them in and you've got to keep that food going in And there we go, there's the second bite of the day. And again, probably four casts after the last one. But in reality, it's probably about 15, 20 minutes because it took a bit of time, kept the bait going in. And it just shows the fact that it's going for the inside bank <laughs> and every little root that's down here. I think is just give the game away he's gonna go for that tree as soon as they go for that inside bank you kind of know you see second one of the day it just shows how different the results can be what you can do with that information is then look at the chart when you get home look at the level that it is today when you fished it and that allows you then to make the right decision before you even leave the house about where to go in future you know if the conditions are about four degrees the river's at the level it is today, you know you're in chance with a few fish and that's how you can pick the right venue consistently and catch consistently by targeting different species and different rivers at the right time. So about a year ago the EA decided to cut all the trees back on the river where the fish in the aid of flood prevention but the downside is it made it more open to cormorants and a lot of the chub this year have had marks on them from where cormorants have attacked them this one though is like a new penny it is in absolutely mint condition not a scale out of place second show of the day one happy angler let's take a look at the side tray for today i've got a couple of pints probably about two and a half pints three pints of red maggot and did make the mistake of leaving the lid on last night so some of them have sweated just popped a bit of ground bait in it's not the best maize flour if you're going to do it is the best we've got a couple of pints of cheshire particle hemp and say so we won't get through all that today but it's there just to hold the fish in the swim like i always say stick float fishing you don't need lots of tackle just some weights disgorger plummet some scissors and in there got everything i need you know hooks line so it's been about 20 minutes now without a bite now normally i would keep on trotting hoping that the fish were there but i've just got a hunch that the fish are in the swim but there's been a bit of commotion I'm just going to keep feeding the swimming maggots it's a cool morning you can see there's plenty of steam coming off my brew I'm just gonna have a, a sip of my brew and keep putting them maggots in and then in about 10 minutes time we'll make another cast there's no doubt that over the past year a lot of what we enjoy doing and where we want to be going fishing or what we want to be doing has been affected i hope you guys over the past year have enjoyed the videos there's a lot of guys who've said it's helped them every friday to you know get through lockdown and enjoy the fishing if they can't get out but from a content point of view i do recognize that a lot of the people that are subscribed to the channel have subscribed for pike fishing chub fishing silver fishing and there has been quite a bit of carp and there's been you know not as much of that on the channel this year that's not to say that i haven't enjoyed sitting and waiting for the carp you know for one or two bites a day that has been learning for me it's something completely new and i have enjoyed it but i do recognize that on the channel some of the content hasn't been what you guys might have subscribed to the channel for the end of the river season is in sight now and my plans for the close season and ahead is to do a lot more lure fishing on the channel you know for the perch and for the pike I'm hoping to get better at that type of angling so if you do enjoy the predator fishing there's going to be some of that throughout the year and there's definitely going to be more pike fishing next winter on the channel 
if we're not in any type of lockdown. I'm putting them maggots in, but wasn't shot in the swim. Second shot, and the third chub of the day in the net. And that's what it's like sometimes. Some days you've just got to keep the maggots going in and keep trotting and trotting. And other days with chub, you've just got to play the game of it. You know, give them time to settle. And it can be literally 10 minutes to let that, let them come back onto the bait, get used to the bait going down. Not a float going down and you're reeling line over the heads. It can be the difference. It just shows they are there. You, sometimes you just got to play the game. So on this river, chub in the three to five pound bracket, you know, them proper chub. But I'll never tire of catching these ones because this means the river's got a future. You know, smaller chub grow into bigger chub and it bodes well for the years to come. For me, a lot of fishing is just about being outside and being bankside and alone with your thoughts. I mean, we live in a world full of noise, don't we? But how beautiful is that? And that's why I love the rivers. You get the peace, the quiet, and everything that goes with it. Important as well is just to keep that hemp going in as well. That, again, is there to keep the fish in, but it won't go as far as the maggots because it's heavier. So you have to be a bit more careful with how you feed the hemp. So we've just hooked into another one, and this does feel like a slightly better one. It's gone straight for that far bank route. You just gotta take your time and try and get all of them out. The more you get all of them out, the more chance you've got of getting more bites. Remember, you're only on like a two pound one ounce hook link. The most important thing is just to try and take your time and not to bully them. Some chub just sit in the flow when you hook them. Some bolt, and it can be that initial bolt that makes them feel like they're massive. I don't actually think this one is, is huge looks like another chublet when they go on that initial bolt that is where the buzz of chub fishing is you know their defiance they sit you strike and it's just solid and it doesn't matter whether they're two pound or five pound it's that solidness but that one as soon as I hooked it bolted for that far bang so the best chub of the day so far and he definitely knew what he was doing straight for them far bank snags there's one bad side though to this his mouth was absolutely jam-packed full of maggots do you think if you put 100 maggots into the swim and there was a lot of chub each one of them might get 10 each whereas if there's only a few then the few get them all don't they so it has got me questioning just how many chub i left in the swim but that is the magic of river fishing you can draw fish into your swim if you keep putting the bait in but it might mean that this one number four might be the last of the bunch but the beauty of fishing is finding out isn't it once you've got an idea of what's working don't change it poured myself another brew i'm going to start drip feeding maggots in as you can see on screen now i'm not going mad five or six maggots each trot through you know some days you need to put big pouches in but today i've got a feeling you know just little and often is going to be the way I'm going to finish my brew, keep drip feeding them maggots in, and then make another cast. And they do love going down this inside bank. Again, not the biggest chub. And I imagine if there's any pike in this little slack, we'll find out today because it does look the perfect size that a pike would have. But when them lips come up, the battle's over. And there we go, what a chunky Riverdane chevin that is. Probably the heaviest one of the day so far, he's thick set and deep. And the fifth one, 
the key now is obviously to keep getting them out we don't want to lose one it'd be a disaster we obviously got a couple in the area quarter past 10 we've been fishing probably two and a bit hours maybe two and a half and we've had five chub even better than i could have expected really you know i was hoping to get one or two all day to have five so far more than made up one of the things that i do try and show on the channel is everything i try and share all the hints and the tips and any little things that i do that can help people you know with the fishing and i do hope that this one has shown today that even if you do know there are chub there if you just don't rush you take it easy you can get you know bites and you can get the most out of the swim you know it'd been very easy today to get two chub early on and then pile a load of maggots in overfed the swim and then you don't get a bite just by taking it patiently putting them pinches of maggots in having a brew like we're having now and just drip feeding them maggots in you know we're up to about what five chub for the best part of maybe 11 pound 12 pound and that some days can continue all day so i'm just going to sit back finish me warm brew keep the maggots going in and a bit of hemp and then we'll get back to it Bending the rod and chub number six over the morning and typical end of winter session where the chub are on the feed and coming to the bait. So chub number six and although I did say this morning conditions were good, overcast, you know, clear river, a nice pace, I didn't expect to get six, I've got to be honest with you but thoroughly enjoying it you know taking me time getting a bend in the rod and yeah what it's all about another troublet went for the margin fought dirty let's get it straight back and repeat exactly what it is we're doing because what we're doing is working on the vlogs where you'd only get one or two all day people ask you know why just sit there all day and do it and it's the challenge it's the unknown you never quite know when days like today are going to be the day of course experience teaches you when days are going to be hard but this is why you do it to enjoy days like today A lovely bending the rod and this one's just holding and don't really know if it's much bigger but at the moment, I'm just doing my utmost not to lose one because losing one, you know, is bad. Now, you obviously a few about, you really don't want to lose one. So, I'm slacking that drag right off, doing my utmost just to play it here. And when he's tired, we'll try and get him in. Let's say, just a pity we're so close to the end of the season never did i imagine we'd get seven but more than made up and after the winter which has been tough for us all being bankside and getting a bend in the rod absolutely on top of the world fishing really is the best thing in the world it really is and i love it about an hour ago had an absolute disaster literally hooked into a fish and seconds later it come off and like I say, why I don't want to lose one is it's taken an hour now to get another bite. And you know how quick we were getting them before they were coming steady. But this does feel a better fish. It's just holding in the flow. Sometimes they can be deceptive. But this one is just holding and plodding. It just shows how losing one can have an impact on the swim. But I don't really want it to come under here too quick if it is a better fish you see sometimes it can be deceiving as you can see in the last hour conditions have changed the sky is blue but this one is just holding a lazy boil just hope it's not foul hooked it does look a slightly better one but <laughs> it's mad how when you're getting them quite steady you're just a bit blase with them reeling them in and then when you've waited an hour for one, it suddenly becomes important. There we go. The best chub of the day so far. And it just shows when I say about losing the fish, 
how important it is that you try your best not to. You've seen the first couple of hours, we were getting regular bites. What, we were up to, was it seven? And then we lost one, it's taking an hour to get number eight. And that is what I'm saying in action. And why, you know, I try my hardest just not to lose them. It's the most important part. But by far the best fish of the day, chub number eight, let's get it straight back. And it is worth mentioning while we have this brew, is my tactics today are exactly the same as what I would normally do. Granted, you know, sometimes I might put more maggot in if I'm really trying to push it. You know, if I've not had a bite all day and I really push it for them to feed. But little and often, and trotting down is how I do it. And nothing is different today apart from the conditions. And that is just how bad them frosts are. There is nothing worse on a canal. They're an absolute killer. Forget a canal. Um, you might get away with it like we did on a river and get one chub or dace. But the rising temperature, clear conditions, and not the first frost of the morning just shows. So we're just coming up to about one o'clock now, um, quarter past one. And after that other chub, it has been very quiet, been persevering, trotting down, not had any indication. And it is strange how there's no dace like that showing. Um, I'm not planning on staying until late on today and I do think if you did stay to that witching hour you probably would pick up one or two more. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to persevere with it for another hour and a bit and if we get to half past two quarter to three then we'll call it a day. So the session does come to an end there now, just got one brew to finish off. The session today has been really enjoyable, just getting back out on the bank, the fresh air and to get those eight chub that you can see on screen now, really enjoyable. It's always good when you have to work at it to get the bites, but the days where they're right on the hemp and the maggots is really good. You know, you can really just wait for that bite. On the channel, you know, a place, a lot of emphasis on not losing a chub. And today's a prime example of it. If you look at the session, two, three hours in, we were getting steady bites. Probably every 20 minutes, we were, you know, picking up a chub and playing that game of feeding and getting a bite. Then you can see chub number eight, which we lost. There's a definite line in the session there where losing that chub completely altered the session. From that point, we took an hour to get one more and then it's just petered out. Experience tells me that if it did stay on the river till about five o'clock, in that witching hour, they would come back on the feed. But I'm leaving now, a happy angler. I'm gonna go home to a nice warm Sunday dinner, spend some time with the family and just enjoy what's left of the weekend. So with that, I'd just like to wish you all tight lines in your own fishing. It'd be great if you could like and subscribe and thank you to all those that do leave a comment and like the video. I want to wish you all tight lines in your own fishing and I'll catch us all next Friday. Tight lines.